Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at uh, Bishop's RV in Junction City, Oregon. End of the day, I've had a lot of sun. I uh, might be a little bit dehydrated right now, I'm trying to remember my own name at this point. But what we have behind us is, uh, I think, something that uh, a lot of people are really going to like. This is the Arctic Fox 22 model. It is a no slide, rock solid, exceptionally well built, well constructed model. And testament to that, the fact that they don't just buy their industry standard chassis from somebody else, they custom engineer, they custom build their own chassis from the ground up. Uh, it gives them more accountability, more uh, direct insight into the engineering, and they build this to a thicker, heavier standard. And a good testament to that is the fact that at uh, 5,380 pounds dry weight on a 22 series with no slide, uh, that, that should tell you right there that this is a little bit thicker on all the bones, thicker sidewalls, thicker every stuff, basically. Um, the, uh, this model right here is a fantastic little solo or couples camper. We have a front walk around bed, a dinette on the door side with a good door side viewing window, which is kind of hard to find in an RV sometimes, and an excellent bathroom. But more than that, um, they, these things are just renowned for having fantastic uh, insulation quality, and they have good holding tank capacities uh, in comparison to their size, which uh, plays right into the fact that this has uh, over a 2,000 pound cargo carrying capacity. If you start looking around at other things out there nowadays, there's so many RVs that have, uh, like I've seen some tandem axle travel trailers like this with less than a thousand pounds of available cargo. This thing has more than double that by default. That is absolutely amazing. Now it's not gonna be for everybody because it is heavier. It is more expensive. And it is all of the browns when we go inside. So like a lot of Arctic foxes, this layout is really nothing new. We're at the back of the RV while well, we were looking for it. Now we're looking over here at the door side because one of my favorite aspects of this RV is that overlook of the dinette when you're sitting there, you know, shooting the breeze, chewing the fat, uh, eating your cookies and biscuits or whatever the case may be, you're overlooking that awesome campsite window. Now, another neat thing on these, all of the windows are a dual pane uh, frameless. Now, it, that doesn't significantly increase the insulation quality. Like, there's a lot of misinformation out there. People call it, it's a thermal window, thermal pane or something. It's not. It's not that. It's not a gas charge window. It's two pieces of glass that are actually bonded together. There's not a dead pocket of air creating a thermal barrier. But the thicker glass drastically reduces the noise inside of this thing. That's one of the cool things about it. Now, one of the things I noticed here is it's an open bedroom, but even with the vaulted ceiling, they still put that nice curtain track up there. So I'm kind of wondering how well is that going to block out the lights? Is it, are you going to be putting on uh, a shadow puppet theater over here? <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so no. The answer is no. You most definitely are not. And this is like so dramatic. I want you to see that I'm not cheating. I want you to see that I didn't shut the lights off. It just, it is, it's a, it's a, it's a double curtain, basically. If you actually put your hands on it, you can feel the different thickness on this thing. But frankly, that's going to be, I'm going to just sound like I'm on infinite repeat. Um, every time I get into a Nash or an Arctic Wolf, it, I do that every time. Arctic Fox, completely vastly different RVs. I'm so sorry. Um, all I, I, I just feel like a broken record because it's it's just seriously, it's the thing they do best. Their fit and finish, their build quality, their thickness, their strength, and their structure. There's just not a lot that really stacks up against it. I think Lance gives it a pretty good run for its money in a lot of areas. But um, Lance is definitely in certain areas still trying to, uh, uh, you know, build for a weight tag. Whereas Arctic Fox goes, I don't care. I don't care what it weighs. Make it so it doesn't fall apart, you know? And it's not that Lance, that, that sounded like I was knocking Lance. Lance does amazing things. They're all CNC routed. They're, they, they do some incredible work for sure. But there just aren't a lot of RVs that are built up to this standard, really. Now, if we're going to be technical, ORV, outdoors RV, yeah. Yeah, they definitely match up very nicely with what an Arctic Fox is doing because they're not technically the same company, but they're kind of, you know, devised by the same people and do the same thing. So they're, um, they're, they're cousins. They're not clones of one another, but the fact is, yeah, of course they can do it. Now, um, this TV right here, it's actually 12 volt. The thing is, unless you're sitting 
at the rear facing bench seat, or if you're laying on the bed, nobody really gets a look at it. And that kind of exploits one of the very few things I'd like to see them do differently on this. I'd like to see them make this a Murphy bed model because then this could be a sofa. You could be sitting here enjoying your entertainment center if you are stuck inside on a rainy day. And I think it would give it the space and the function of a no slide RV without, or uh, of a RV with a slide out rather, without actually having the extra weight and cost of a slide out. And if there's something you can do to keep the cost managed on an Arctic Fox without decreasing the structure and quality, I'm pretty sure more people are going to be interested in that than fewer. But what is your take on that? Should this be a Murphy bed model? So leave me a little uh, comment on that. Let me know. Everything in this pocket screwed. You see the, uh, the hidden hinges, all hardwood cabinet doors and frames. There are some manufacturers who try to get cute and say, we have hardwood cabinet doors. And then you look, it's just got a flat panel insert in it. Well, they'll say, well, that's the insert. That's the door. Well, yeah, no, I'm sorry. That's, that's just not the same. Over here, we have an eight cubic foot gas electric two-way fridge freezer. That is all they use. They do not offer swaptional 12 volts on these, so kind of keep that in mind. Arctic Fox does use a larger oven, which is fantastic, so you can cook a little more than just cookies and biscuits. And their engineers seem to understand that grease can also travel side to side because they're one of the very few builders out there who actually includes a side splash. This is all uh, solid surface countertops. You see that inset stainless sink over there. And notice those power outlets in the wall. First of all, it's awesome that they're down low at the dedicated countertop space. Brilliant! But the fact that they're in this laminated wall is proof right there that they are running a thicker true two-inch sidewall. Because if it's anything less than that, you can't really build a, a power receptacle into the wall without kind of framing it out and bulging it into the RV a little bit. But I've yet to find the perfect RV. Um, I have one, I think, significant ding against this kitchen. I think a lot of people are, are thinking, hey, he's going to talk about how it doesn't have a space for a wastebasket. You're like, I can deal with that in a small camper. I do think that there are spaces for it, but that's not what I'm getting at. If you're keeping score, where's the pantry? This RV has an excellent kitchen, but the reason it has that extra large kitchen countertop is because it does not have a traditional vertical pantry. Instead, this one really leans on the under the counter and uh, kind of overhead cabinet storage that you find in it. And take a look at this. I can talk about things being thicker and built thicker, but it's hard for you to see that, right? Look up in the skylight. Look at how thick that is. Now, for reference, I'm going to put my little skinny gamer fingers here with my little lady fingers up in the space just to give you a size reference right there. It's bigger, thicker than my hand, and it's fully insulated all the way through. The, the things like the plywood frame outs on their, their drawers, everything in this is bigger, thicker, heavier, stronger. Uh, and I mean, right here, perfect. This is exactly what I was talking about. Look at the plywood structure at the front of that door right there, of, of the drawer pole itself. It's just it's just way more than you typically find, uh, you know, on a daily basis. And then finally the bathroom before we step outside. I would say the road mode, but with no slide, this RV is always in road mode, man. You stop anywhere and she is fully functional, baby. There is no setup required. And uh, if you're going to set up shop here in the bathroom for a while, I found the space wasn't bad. Now, obviously, the toilet paper roll is pretty close to you. I wish that toilet was slid just slightly to the left to make more room for righties, but there might be something like a floor stud in the way, you know, fighting against the plumbing that's in there. This is something I noticed in their 25 model. I think it's really smart. They put a window in the bathroom for the extra light. That's nice. But they frost it. So you're not giving up privacy. So you're not putting on a free show for Harold the neighbor who just landed in his diesel pusher next door. No, sir. Assuming you're park camping. Now, if you are uh, way out in the boondocks and somebody's watching you, well, that's probably, um, that's a bear. Look at this mega closet. Um, it, it's almost, is this going to sound stupid? Is it too much open dead space? 
Would it? Would you like it if, say, like the right hand side was shelving and the left hand side was closet space? To me, I, I would personally kind of like a split or some removable shelves there. But if the worst I have to say about this is they gave me too much space to do stuff with, I don't know that that's really a, a real problem. <laughs> Now, stuffing myself into that storage cabinet, because I don't use wide-angle lenses, which would make this far more comfortable, because I don't want to tell you what's going up my backside right now. That vaulted ceiling opens things up very nicely in here. And even with my head all the way against the sidewall, I still wasn't bonking the noggin there. Height-adjustable shower hardware is a really nice find if you have people in your household of two different uh, verticalities. But they did a thing down here. Like, it's nice that it's an easy step-in shower. Why the heck are these down by my ankles? What is that about? Who is that for? Now, the refrigerator is right behind the wall here, but they found room for the plumbing for the shower. Why not for the handle? Like, that is the one thing that I looked at this, I go, uh, I, I don't even know. But I'm sure someone has a whale of a tail to tell me about it because i mean look at that tell me those don't look like whales tails and this this really is a rarity anymore like a really high class premium grade trailer built like this but with no slide you just rarely find it um usually things with no slides everyone's really fighting one another being real price competitive they tend to only come in the uh, the less expensive brands um this is this is truly going against the grain but i could see somebody like uh, a regular viewer and at this point i would almost say uh, a customer who became a friend um mr william schooley and and uh and his wife there i i can imagine that he's absolutely loving what he's looking at right here um he purchased a no slide coachman freedom express from us and he was specifically wanting the no slide simplicity factors and with this having all the premium build i i think this is something he would really respect right here now it's easy to miss but down here under the skirt line there is a, a gas grill quick connect but it's really tucked up under there isn't it holy cow you can see the gas line from here at least but anyway there is a quick connect over there. There is also a, uh, a full pass-through compartment. Over here on the right, though, are things like easy reach battery disconnect, which is kind of handy. Um, the uh, RV also has, if you remember in the, the bedroom area up front, that little laundry chute. I just sort of scooted the laundry basket out of the way so you could see this full storage area. And teleporting over here to the other side, one of the things that we also spot by that baggage door is that little Zamp solar prep plug. So it is prepped and ready for a side solar panel, a little portable job in case you want to park in the shade. There is on the roof, and we'll get a look at this in just a minute, a, uh, a, a factory kind of just battery solar tender. Not a big package or anything like that, but you can option some additional solar onto one of these if it's not already present. Um, their, their tongue jack up here. Uh, one of the extra little things they do, just to help keep the, uh, the plug from getting fouled up by the weather, because they got themselves a little strap-on plug buddy right there just to keep it out of the, uh, you know, the wind and the rain and the everything else. Um, over here, we've got ourselves a little, um, like, stone guard. Well, not little. It's absolutely massive. It's like a spray-on bed liner. But look at how much frontage area it covers on these things. Because if you do decide to get off pavement, and that's kind of, I think, one of the main differences. I think an Arctic Fox over here is something that could go off pavement. Whereas Nash, that is something that could truly go off-road. The neat thing, though, is if you do want more of those, a little bit more plush upscale features, not quite so barren and rugged on the inside, uh, like Arctic Foxes are still prepped and ready if you want to add shocks to them. We at least have the Goodyear Endurance radials, which is fantastic down here. Uh, I'd be surprised if you couldn't swap out some uh, more aggressive tires if you're interested. And once again, you know, they're, they're very proud of this. They build their own structures. And I don't just mean the, the lamination on the walls. The chassis itself is a Northwood chassis. They build to a thicker, bigger, heavier standard. And as a result, there have been some folks who have been concerned about uh, things like travel trailer uh, tongues bending under stress under certain conditions. Now, it's that's, that's a real thing. That can happen. It is, thankfully, 
very uncommon. And the average person like me, it's not something I'm going to have to deal with because I tend to camp on pavement most of the time. But it is, depending on how you camp, something you might consider. So if you really are going to go to a more rugged area, this extra heavy-duty thick construction on stuff, using thicker grade steel on everything, it might be just the ticket for you. Now, notice too, not a special lift package, but the sewer outlet is up higher than the uh, stabilizer jack. So that should stay nice and clear of obstacles. Um... Oh, crap. I always forget this. I want to say 300, but I believe it's a 250-pound rated uh, rear cargo uh, receiver on the back there. But notice you're getting a receiver and a bumper. I like and better than or. I like options. Uh, full outside utility shower, a uh, bigger water heater on these as well. Like uh, I wouldn't even say like a fifth wheel because, frankly, it's bigger than what you end up getting on a lot of fifth wheels here on this tiny no-slide trailer. Now over here on the door side, uh, you can actually option, I, I don't think we're looking at it today, but you can option a protective wrap onto the awning. So while it's in storage like this, if it's stored outside, that awning material at the base isn't getting eaten up by the weather. And that door side window, man. Giving you, uh, whether you're you know in the parks, it just gives you a good look at your campsite. And if you're out of the parks, it gives you an amazing view of wherever you happen to be parked. You know what I mean? Uh, this is also very interesting in that it's a, uh, a rare example of a travel trailer that is generator prepped. There's even a, a factory gen option you could apply to these. And speaking of power, now up here on the roof, um, you know, it's pretty straightforward for the most part. Uh, like the white AC shrouds, nice thing. I've talked about that in previous Arctic videos. But I, I realized I've talked about the expanded solar packages that you have available for these when I could literally just look to my left and look over at this one's brother, the Nash over there, and showcase the fact that you can get that uh, additional roughly, I think 170 watt panel added to this. In addition to that small little trickle charge panel that we're looking at in the foreground, in the background, you can add an additional 100 or I think 170 from the factory to really expand on the solar capacity. Now Nash over there, that tends to be more of the off-grid warrior. Whereas Arctic Fox, again, tends to be dressed up a little more. A uh, little more uh, probably park use, but it could still get off pavement a little bit. So whether you're looking for small, simple, no slide goodness, or maybe you want to step up to the 25, which is a fantastic floor plan with a great kitchen and a slide out. Or if you're really looking for that off grid ruggedness, take a look at its little sister over here, Nash. Uh, well, I don't know that little, like, I think Nash and Arctic Fox are really on a, more of a parallel level. Um, they just, they do things in a little bit different way. But whatever the case, we got that. And we got a whole lot more for you here at Bish's RV. Again, I'm sitting here in Oregon today. Uh, I, I know that we also have these at our Salt Lake City location. I'm pretty sure we have them somewhere else as well. But what I will do, because I can't remember all of it, I'll leave you a link in the video description. You can see where we have one. If we have one in stock, you'll see uh, pricing listed right there for you where you never have to call. You don't have to give your grandmother's blood type or anything like that. Uh, which, how did you get that anyway? Right? That's creepy. Whatever. But the fact is, when you're ready, we're ready. And we'd love to work with you. So until then, take care. Stay safe. Have fun. Best wishes from Bishes, everyone. Bye.